Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. I would like to describe the highlights of waxing this anterior bridge. The one thing that's different about this anterior bridge in waxing is that we'll be using the pins. These are iridial platinum pins that have a knurled surface and they are called Ponta wire and these particular ones are marketed by the Jelenko company. Cutting the pins is very, very important because if you use your standard side cutting pliers, you'll end up getting a burr on the end of this knurled wire. So we are going to have available one of these dial a pin cutters and what this cutter does is it just nips off the end very flat so there's no burr on the end. We will need two pins four millimeters long, one for the cingulum of the cuspid and one for the cingulum of the central incisor and then two five millimeters long for the incisal pins on the central incisor. The way this works is you set the pin all the way in, cut it, and then tap, pop it out. We have a couple of these cut already, and we'll cut one last one. Now one of the other things that we have to be careful of is that when we cut the end of the pin flat, that reaching into this small delicate pinhole, it's very difficult to get a direct seat, especially if your draw is off slightly. So what we like to do is take a sand disc and round the end of these pins and just make it slightly bullet shaped so that it will feed into the pinhole on the cuspid and the central incisor a little easier. And the, the, the way you do this is you roll, and I'll try to hold this nice and steady, you roll the pin like this as you're running a little sand disc. And as you roll, this will take off the sharp edge and make it a little easier in placing the pin in the pin hole. It's best to use a hollow beak pliers to grasp the pins, as you see here, and we will place one of the pins, then in the cuspid, this will be the four millimeter pin, seat it all the way, make sure that it does seat, and then we will remove this and place regular lubricant microfilm on the die, place the pin back in. We don't want to get microfilm on the pin itself, and then we'll build up this particular wax pattern in wax. The cingulum pin may be a little bit long, and you may want to just cut it slightly. You know how to wax, so I'm going to eliminate the various stages in the wax pattern fabrication, but I'm going to show you what this particular pattern looks like. We have to develop the grooves and the uh, margins, and you should be able to pull this off and have the cingulum pin, and I'll try to hold this steady again, in the wax pattern as you see here. Now the spruing of this particular pattern is quite simple. The sprue is attached, as you can see from this view, with a Y14 gauge wax sprue that is attached to a 10 gauge sprue going down to the sprue former. If you use two 14 gauge wax sprues all the way down, the feeding is not fast enough. So you need a rather large aperture going to the Y itself. This is designed then so that the top of the wax pattern is again one quarter of an inch from the top of the investment ring. We will be using luster cast for a couple of reasons, luster cast and the high heat technique 
uh, is used to burn out the Duralay, luster cast does have a reducing agent in it, and the reducing agent creates a reduced atmosphere around these metal pins, and as a result, the metal will cast much better uh, at this atmosphere. Also, we will burn this out at 1,200 degrees rather than 900 degrees. It'll be burned out 300 degrees hotter, again, so we get a good bond to these metal pins. Now when we wax the central incisor, we will place the four millimeter pin on the cingulum and the two five millimeter pins on the incisal. This we will lubricate with Duralay lubricant because we're going to apply a Duralay on the lingual surface of these, of this uh, central incisor. You notice these pins stick up just a little bit and then you will be using your brush paint on technique and you'll take small bits of powder and liquid and place them on the lingual surface and make a small Duralay tripod connecting the three pins leaving the pins stick out slightly so we can grasp them and remove the pattern it's not necessary to get the Duralay down to the margins because this we will define in wax now when the Duralay has hardened, then we will take a how pliers and grasp the pattern and pull it out. I'll hold this on my finger here. And as you can see, there's a thin amount of Duralay attaching the three parallel pins. If we were to do this in wax, and the wax is rather thin, uh, when we would try to remove the pattern, the pins would pull out of the wax pattern because the wax is not that strong and the pins are very, very retentive. So the Duralay gives us a good platform to hold these pins. Now I'm going to place this on the tooth, slide this pattern down into the proper position. After you've taken it off to make sure that you have draw and you've placed enough Duralay lubricant on this, then this is placed back on the tooth and the pattern is trimmed down so it is quite thin and you reduce the heads of two of the pins leaving the mesial incisal pin long. The reason we do this is we'd like to leave a little handle. Again, this is rather retentive and if you grind all the pins off you have a very difficult time removing the wax pattern. So we will leave this pin sticking out throughout the entire waxing procedure. And then it'll allow us to grasp the the pin as so with the how pliers and you simply remove it and you'll notice that we have refined the margins then with inlay wax thin this pattern down so that we have again the Duralay tripod and then the margins in wax we'll place this back on the die we'd like you to place the shims in your uh, uh, condyles and wax the platform, the long centric, on the lingual surface as outlined in your handout. When you've waxed this and you're sure that the anatomy on the cuspid and the uh, central incisor is correct, then we will refine the margins and then sprue this pattern. In this particular case, we will be using one large sprue down to the very top of this particular ledge. And if you find that, and if you find that the wax pattern is rather thin, it is permissible to plus up this lingual surface a little bit so that there is a good flow of gold into the pattern and into the thin parts of the pattern by perhaps two little ribs. And I would like to place the sprue on this and then I will show you a view of the sprue and the little ribs. This pattern now has been placed on a 10 gauge sprue and again we have the pattern a, a quarter of an inch from the top of the investing ring. We have added extra wax as a ribbing to allow the gold to travel 
through the thin parts of this pattern. And also we have placed, I'll turn this pattern sideways, a small knockoff lug. And what that lug is for is that when we place this back on our working model and try to take soldering relations with these smooth, thin castings, there's no grasp of a duralay when we're taking the soldering investment. So we place a little dimple that's not an occlusion, and that's left on until after we're done soldering. It is permissible to use a Y sprue on this also. You'll notice the knockoff lug that uh, was placed on the, the cuspid. And you can get a, uh, if I turn this sideways, I think you'll be able to see that little lug right here. Small little lug that will fit into the soldering relations that will hold this little casting when it's finally cast in the proper relationship. Now we'll invest this in luster cast, burn it out at 1200 degrees. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.